Have you ever wondered where the term Trojan horse originated? A phrase that has infiltrated our modern lexicon, symbolizing a deceptive strategy, a gift hiding a dangerous surprise. But how did this term come to be? And why does it continue to hold such a prominent place in our language and culture? The answers lie in the annals of ancient history, in a tale of war, deceit, and the downfall of a great city. Let's delve into the past and uncover the origins of the Trojan horse. The tale of the Trojan horse begins with a war, the infamous Trojan War. This was no ordinary conflict. It was an epic clash of pride, power and passion that lasted for an insurmountable 10 years. But what sparked this monumental battle? The answer lies in a tale of love and betrayal, with a woman at its center, Helen of Troy. Helen, often described as the most beautiful woman in the world, was the wife of Menelaus, the king of Sparta. She found herself at the heart of this conflict due to her abduction by Paris, the handsome prince of Troy. Whether Helen was taken by force or left willingly with Paris is a topic of debate among historians and storytellers. Regardless, her departure from Sparta was seen as a severe insult and a call to arms. Seething with anger, Menelaus called upon his brother Agamemnon, the mighty king of Mycenae. Together, they rallied the Greek city-states, uniting them under a common cause to bring Helen back and avenge the affront to Greek honor. Thus, a thousand ships set sail towards the city of Troy, marking the beginning of the Trojan War. The Greeks, led by formidable warriors like Achilles and Odysseus, fought valiantly against the Trojans, who were equally resilient under the command of Hector, Paris's brother. The war raged on, with neither side willing to back down. The city of Troy, known for its impregnable walls, stood strong against the relentless Greek assault. As the war dragged on, it became clear that a simple battle would not be enough to secure victory. The Greeks needed a strategy, something that could penetrate the high walls of Troy and bring the war to a decisive end. Little did they know the answer would come in the form of a wooden horse. But how does a wooden horse fit into this tale of war and vengeance? Enter the Trojan horse, a supposed gift, but one with a deadly surprise. A symbol of deception, the Trojan horse is one of the most infamous stratagems in history. It was born out of desperation, a last-ditch effort by the Greeks to end a decade-long war. Its construction was no small feat. Imagine crafting a monumental horse, large enough to hold a select group of soldiers, yet convincing enough to be perceived as an innocent gift. Odysseus, the Greek hero known for his cunning, is credited with this ingenious plan. He proposed the idea of creating a massive wooden horse and offering to the goddess Athena. The Greeks hoped this symbol of peace and reverence would convince the Trojans that they had finally admitted defeat and were retreating. Under Odysseus's watchful eye, the Greeks set to work. They built the horse, so large it towered above the men, yet hollow on the inside. It was constructed with intricate details, making it a truly magnificent sight to behold. Inside this deceptive structure, a small group of Greek soldiers hid, ready to execute the second part of their plan once night fell. When the construction was complete, the Greeks left the horse outside the gates of Troy and retreated, feigning defeat. The Trojans, puzzled by this unexpected gift, debated its purpose. Some were suspicious, but most were swayed by the beauty of the horse and the apparent goodwill of their enemies. The Trojans decided to accept the horse as a divine gift, a symbol of their victory. They celebrated their supposed triumph, oblivious to the deadly surprise that awaited them. As they reveled in their joy, they pulled the massive horse into the heart of their city. The Trojans, unaware of what lay within, brought the horse into their city. As night fell, the true purpose of the Trojan horse was revealed. As the city of Troy slumbered, the belly of the wooden beast opened and out crept the Greek soldiers silent as specters. They had waited, biding their time, hidden within the hollow confines of the horse. A gift that was more Trojan than the Trojans could have ever imagined. The soldiers, led by the cunning Odysseus, moved stealthily through the quiet city. Their hearts pounded in their chests, but their resolve was as solid as the bronze of their swords. This was not just another battle. It was the culmination of a decade-long war, a war that had taken the lives of many a brave warrior on both sides. This was their chance to end the strife, 
to bring down the walls of Troy and to return to their homes across the Aegean Sea. One by one, they opened the city gates, letting in the rest of the Greek army, who had been waiting under the cover of the night. And then, the city, that had been so quiet, so peaceful, was suddenly filled with the sounds of battle cries and the clash of weapons. The Trojans, caught off guard and unprepared, fought back bravely, but the surprise attack had given the Greeks the upper hand. The battle raged on, the city of Troy becoming a battleground. The Trojans fell, one by one, their defiance slowly fading away as the Greeks overpowered them. The once mighty city was reduced to ruins, its walls crumbling, its people defeated. And as dawn broke over the city, the Greeks stood victorious. The city of Troy, which had defied them for ten long years, lay at their feet. The Trojan horse, the symbol of their victory, stood tall amidst the ruins, a stark reminder of the deception that had brought down a city. The city of Troy fell, marking the end of the Trojan War. The fall of Troy was a testament to the power of cunning over strength, a lesson that would echo through the annals of history. The fall of Troy left a lasting legacy, one that permeates our culture today. The Trojan horse, an emblem of cunning and deception, became a key influence in future military tactics. Leaders worldwide studied and adapted the Trojan horse strategy, recognizing the power of deception as a tool in warfare. It showed that battles could be won not just with brute force but with brains, breeding a new era of strategic thinking in military operations. But the legacy of the Trojan horse extends beyond military tactics. It found its way into the heart of art, literature and popular culture. The story of the Trojan horse sparked the imagination of countless artists throughout history. Paintings, sculptures and even architecture have been inspired by this tale of cunning and deceit. In literature, the Trojan horse became a symbol for a destructive ploy hidden under a pleasing facade. Its story has been retold in countless languages and forms from epic poems like Virgil's Aeneid to modern novels and plays. It's a tale that warns us of the dangers of accepting gifts without suspicion, a lesson that remains relevant to this day. In popular culture, the Trojan horse is a common metaphor for any trick that causes a target to invite a foe into a secured place. It's seen in films, TV shows, video games, and even in the world of computer science, where a Trojan horse is a malicious program disguised as a harmless one. The story of the Trojan horse has endured for over 3,000 years. Its tale of cunning over strength, of victory through deception, continues to captivate us. It's a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring fascination we have with the complexities of human nature. The Trojan horse, a symbol of deception and cunning, continues to resonate with us today. Its legacy is woven into the fabric of our culture, a reminder of the power and danger of deception. The term Trojan horse has found its way into our modern language. It's fascinating, isn't it? An ancient Greek story, surviving through millennia, now sits comfortably in our 21st century vocabulary. And like its historical counterpart, the modern Trojan horse is just as deceptive and destructive. Today, we frequently encounter this term in the realm of computer technology. In this digital age, a Trojan horse, or simply Trojan, refers to malicious software or malware that tricks users into downloading or running it on their computers. Named after the deceptive wooden horse of Troy, this software works similarly, presenting itself as a harmless program, only to reveal its destructive intentions once inside the user's system. It's a form of social engineering where the malicious actors exploit the one weakness that never seems to go away, human curiosity and trust. Just like the Trojans who let their guard down and brought the wooden horse into their city, computer users often inadvertently download these harmful programs lured by the promise of a beneficial software or an enticing link. The consequences? Well, they can range from annoying pop-ups to stolen personal information and in some extreme cases, rendering the entire system useless. This modern Trojan horse, therefore, poses a significant threat to individual privacy and global cybersecurity. But it's not all doom and gloom. Just as the Greeks used the Trojan horse to teach lessons about trust and deception, we too can learn from our encounters with these digital threats. They remind us of the importance of vigilance, the need for strong cybersecurity measures, and the perils of trusting something based solely on its outward appearance. So, the next time you come across a suspicious email or an unfamiliar software, 
Remember the story of the Trojan horse? It might just save you from a modern-day Trojan invasion. From ancient history to modern technology, the Trojan horse remains a powerful symbol. A symbol of cunning, of deception, but also a reminder of the importance of caution and vigilance. A tale as old as time, still making waves in our digital age. The tale of the Trojan horse is one of intrigue, deception, and the fall of a great city. It's a story that's been passed down through the ages, a testament to the cunning of the human mind and the devastating effects of underestimating one's enemy. We began our journey with an intriguing question that led us back to the time of the Trojan War. An epic conflict. It was a war that saw the mightiest of Greek heroes pitted against the fortified city of Troy. But as we discovered, it wasn't brute strength that won the day. Instead, it was a simple wooden horse. The deceptive gift, as it came to be known, was the Greek's master stroke. Crafted with care and left outside the gates of Troy, it was a symbol of their supposed surrender. And the Trojans, believing they had won the war, brought the horse within their walls, unaware of the Greek soldiers hidden inside. The fall of Troy was swift and brutal. As night fell, the Greeks emerged from the horse and opened the city gates. The Trojan army, caught unawares and lulled into a false sense of security, stood no chance. Their city was sacked, their people enslaved, and their pride shattered. Yet even in defeat, the legacy of Troy and its fall lived on. It served as a cautionary tale, a warning of the perils of pride and the dangers of deception. And the Trojan horse, the instrument of their downfall, became a symbol of cunning strategy and devastating betrayal. In modern times, the story of the Trojan horse has not lost its relevance. It continues to be invoked as a metaphor in various contexts. From politics to cybersecurity, it stands as a reminder that not all gifts are what they seem and that our greatest threats may come in the most unexpected forms. So as we draw our journey to a close, we reflect on the story of the Trojan horse. It's a tale that spans millennia, a narrative that has been woven into the fabric of our cultural consciousness. It reminds us of our capacity for genius, our propensity for deception and the lasting impact of our actions. Next time you hear the term Trojan horse, you'll know the rich history that lies behind it. It's more than just a story. It's a lesson from history, a warning from the past, and a symbol of the enduring power of human ingenuity and deceit.